The angling, processing, and marketing of fish products are essentially complementary functions of all food production chains. In many developing countries, women traditionally play a major role in these activities and dominate the markets either as buyers or sellers of food. For most women, marketing is a secondary activity which provides the only source of income. In my quest to find out about women who contribute their own quota to the economy, I embarked on the journey to Badagri and Ekme, two fishing communities in Lagos, Nigeria. From the point of no return to the popular Okun River, where women buy fish from fishermen, it took about 15 minutes on boat to get to dry land in this fishing community of Badagri. It took another five minutes of bumpy ride on dry land via a motorcycle to get to the shore. At the waterside, I met Abosede Durojaye, a middle-aged woman who claims she has been in the business of selling fish for 20 years. According to her, the men in the community fish while the women buy and sell. Fish business is a family business. The job can be very challenging because we don't have the facilities to preserve. Thus, we have to smoke the fish so that we don't lose our money invested in the business. I learned the trade for several months. You have to be very hardworking to do this business. At times, to preserve the fish during the rainy season, we have to smoke the fish. Oftentimes, I and other women stay awake till 3 a.m. to complete the local way of preservation. She and other women in Badagri speak on the cost implication of doing the business. Fish business is a lucrative business. At times, we make profits. Other days, we lose money. It is very stressful. At the moment, a bucket of crayfish costs 7,000 naira. After sales, we make between 1,000 naira and 2,000 naira. The government should please help the fishermen. They lack basic equipment. Before now, the cost of a bucket of crayfish is 4,000 naira. <laughs> Like uh, this uh, sack fish, we used to buy that one. Sometimes we buy fish like about maybe 200,000. If we sell and finish, we can see 150, so we can see 250. So if you don't no move, like maybe see season by season, if you maybe as March, January, February, March, maybe it's down, it's not moving. We come to this side, we buy the fresh one indirect that is measurement. We can buy that 10,000, we can sell it 11,000. Sometimes we can buy 10,000, we can sell it 7,000. We used to buy fish of 6,000, now we are buying it 9,000. How could you make it? If the government help them, maybe they return the fuel back to 100 naira. So we can buy the fish, maybe 5,000, 4,000. So we can see some gain. Because fish is very, very expensive. That we even sometimes if we sell it, we remove for firewood money, with our hala, we can't even see anything. Despite having a coastline of about 833 kilometers bordering the Atlantic Ocean, as well as fresh and mangrove swamps, creeks, coastal rivers as well as near and offshore waters. It is ironic that Nigeria still depends on fish importation to meet its fish demand. Eight out of the 36 Nigerian states, with 25% of Nigeria's total population, share the Atlantic Ocean coastline. Yet, national supply cannot meet national demand. According to the 2016 Nigeria Fisheries Statistics Report, the country's annual fish demand is estimated at 3.32 million metric tons, an unsurprisingly high number considering a steaming population of about 186 million people. But domestic production stands at only about 1.1 million metric tons annually. This leaves a deficit of 2.2 million metric tons, which is largely supplied through fish importation.
research conducted by the Nigerian Institute of Oceanography and Marine Research. The country's bill on fish importation stands at about $1 billion annually. Titus Ola, a fisherman in Badagri, said there is a lot the government can do to ensure the fishing potential of the community is fully maximized. When we get enough fish, you know, there's no way to preserve it. So we need the government to assist us so that we can be able to promote the job. Uh, when we need tools, the onboard engine, the canoe, net, and etc. And we need deep, giant standard uh, depression pool room. Uh, the community will have, there's no light, no equipment to maintain the, the, the business. Badagri is a town with rich cultural heritage, prominent for its thriving fish market, the issue of epileptic power supply and underdevelopment in the community remains one big issue preventing the residents of this community from contributing to the economic growth of the country. Ekpa is an ancient town that uh, has been existing for many decades. Part of the job in Ekpe, did by people, we are fishermen, at the same time, farmers. And Ekpe was founded by a name calling Huraka, somebody calling Huraka. Huraka is a hunter. Names Ekpe as Oku Ekpe. There's an ant. Because the ant is very common in Ekpe. Bush. And uh, when he go on, farm, on uh, hunting as a hunter, so this ant used to disturb. When I have asked her, Huraka, why can't you kill much animal? He said, that's a, there's a, an ant called Ekpe. He's disturbing. By the time he says so, when he jumps his leg on ground, and that's so the animals will run away. So that's how the name of Ekpe was founded. And then, before that time, Ekpe has been assisting. The first settler is a fisherman, too, is a hunter, too. That's the house we are calling Lugbasa in Ekpe. If they tell you, say, Ekpe Alaro, Omogumo Dede, Alaro is the wife of uh, Lugbasa. So they have been insisting. It's the smoke of their fire that Huraka saw before he comes from one time in the way. So that shows that Ekpe has been a nation town and been insisting for long. But to know the name that they call Ekpe, even though it could have just been Ekpe, it could have been Alaro Omogumo Dede. But because of that, Hunter, they turned into Ekpe Alaro Oguma Dedi, which is one of the major towns that stopped, stopped the slave trade. And the slave trade aspect of it now is what they are doing as the Abu Butrigata now, which we do as a yearly event. Because it's on this lagoon, they stopped this slave trade. So the people that engage and that war with what called Akala Julu, who used to come and who is the major uh, slave trader man. In the local government area of Lagos, I visited the Oluru market, popular for selling of different types of fish. There, I met different women in the fish business. Their main concern is to secure a steady living all year round for their families. During an interview with TVC News, they shared their daily experience in the fish business. For several decades, they have battled many challenges like poor infrastructure and lack of loan facilities to invest in the business. They want government to intervene. I've been in the fish business for more than four decades. The market is not conducive during the rainy season. The road is always bad. The cold room the government provided for us is yet to be commissioned. 
We want government to help us repair the program. It used to be a very busy market, but activities right now is very slow because of lack of funds. Government should please collaborate with us. The equipment we use to go and fish is very expensive. When I started this fish business 30 years ago, to construct a boat and buy an engine was about 160,000 naira. Currently, you need 2 million naira to buy an engine and construct a boat. Most of us have run out of business. We had an association, but now we don't have that capacity anymore. Reacting to this, the Permanent Secretary of the Lagos State Ministry of Agriculture said, Government will re-strategize on how women in the fish business can be encouraged. The production of fish in Nigeria is 800,000 metric tons. And Lagos alone contributes 172,700 metric tons compared to the 2.7 million metric tons required in Nigeria. And the remaining is exported. And therefore, when you look at the Lagos State production, Lagos State is the major fish producing area in Nigeria. Apart from that, we have taken the fish business so serious that a lot of our women now depend on it for their survival and even for the sustenance of their family. Uh, what we have done as a government is to encourage them in the area of processing and preservation. And that they do from cold room up to smoking claims. Very big fish here, like orange fish. We are using for this uh, marriage wedding. We have a uh, big catfish. We have big Chinese nose. Paracuda, red snapper, swordfish. And you should appreciate something that at the same time we have sea, we have lagoon. The two was embraced by this separate division. Ejati Awangpa, this year death, or death Jacoba, Lanche, fishermen, you know, I want four fathers. Et <laughs> Because of that one test, in your men and pay one small look, a dan or look, that was a jatia and palepe. A jatia and palepe is the best. A da T Lego City, Jay, Bubu, and Walla Lawa, a pen not one reja, that a badon, that a co, that of your one wa. Jimoke, Kola Wale, an indigene of Ekbe, told me the cost of different types of fish available at the Oluwo market. She said the least fish in the market cost 7,000 Naira, which is about 20 US dollars. Fish business is big business and can be expensive because we don't have enough money. The men are limited on the number of fish they bring to the market. Some fish cost 50,000 Naira and we can't display only one fish for customers to buy. I buy fish oftentimes here. It's cheaper than what you will buy from retailers. I love eating fish because it's healthy and can be used for several delicacies.
ti oja o ba wa rorun to ja ba po bo se po yi to re ja tin de a ma mu phone a ma pe won pe e ja ti de kon di yan owo bo se nta fun wa kon fa seyin ka wa na le ri nkan kan lori e dojumo la ma no ata go mewa ro titi ja go ma run mefa re le se ma ba wa nbi won ti kan ta ba fe lori se se ja lo wa o ta won doju kan ni pe ewe yi lo nda mu wa ewe to ba de to ba blog gbogbo bi wa o si ta je government na ti try le lori won ti gbe yan ju gan wa se ko na lo pada aya fi ti olorun ba ba wa fi o ti ko ko ba renovate awon pe ko wa na ja won need renovation like bi se ase ni mo si ko si omi rara ko si na ko so mi ta le mu bi omi tap even kan ga bo o to ma fi je je ko si a ba fe se mu start battery api o ta ko si omi je na tap rara ni na ja a ya go good news I want to come there. You know what I want to for. I want to stay here for. But I answer all for government. I will come and renovate. One, the market itself just needs to be renovated. But the fear of renovation is, by the time they finish renovating, most of them will not be able to afford payment and get it back. So they are always scared of renovation. because like the edge here maybe they should have fence it for security reasons but they still need the water because it's part of their day to day existence so there's no way you can fence off the water entirely but they could still do something that during the rainy season like all here it's unpassable for customers they need support of the government financially in their business because it's a day to day event they buy they sell every day it's not something they can keep once they buy they buy it life fish and when it's dead it's to their own loss not to the seller's loss because they will have bought it when it was still breathing so once the fish is dead it's to the seller's loss and to the buyers well getting more of a profit from there because you now buy cheaper because the fish is dead but when it's breathing yes you can eat. that's when they can bargain with you but except that so if they are lost when the fish dies they don't have customers to buy when they are they are alive i think that's where they really need financial support because they need funds to buy and then access for people to come more to patronize them so and this once they buy they sell they will not have to go through all these losses of the fish dying in the night this yellow thing owere eja ta wan ta nbi ni so oni la oni kekere o la tell eleke shele 3025 mm so eleyi rice tapa igba kere so oni la oni kekere eleyi bo se wa yin sin o won ju gbogbo won eleyi lo toro dun ju won lo ale tabi 3000 eleyi shiny nose o fun la ma npe ni lede yoruba ti wa but lede oloyin bo shiny nose iru eleyi sale tabi 6000 5000 so catfish tori black fish yan yan o se catfish this one is really catfish obokun ti wa to ye pa olorun lo produce ele ki n se pe eyan lo produce so iru eleyi se ale tabi 4 5 ti o ba se jarara ale ta 5000 bo asiko ojo la wa yi ale tabi 4 3 5 eleyi e je ojo ni ko ki ma nwe le ru to ba ti da asiko ojo lo ma wa le 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 eleyi tori won sin eyi e ni ki n se jojo ju mo to ba ti wa lo nisin o to the next year june july august
We want the state and federal government to come at our aid and improve our agricultural and fishing system, like how China, Japan, uh, Hong Kong, and uh, these uh, people from Cyprus, you are Sami. So how they encourage their people on their fishing. So we want our people to be more encouraging because they say we want the modern system. You know, we are still using old system. Although the Lagos State Government are supporting, giving outboard engine, giving out net, and so on. So, but still, we still want the modern system of fishing. And you say, you come back, call it Chessy Bank. Industry one bay. So, following on Mawa, a tongue carry that is the research. We need to question, let's see about the answer. Don't call a lot of coke, you know. Oh, by the way, by the way, by the way, People from various parts of Lagos visit the markets to patronize the fish sellers. Millions of people globally, especially the world's poorest, rely on healthy ocean for jobs and food, underscoring the urgent need for sustainable protection of these natural resources. According to the World Bank, oceans contributes about $1.5 trillion in value added to the global economy. It is estimated that around 60 million people are employed in fisheries and aquaculture, with the majority working and small-scale operations in developing countries as at September 2018. For Abose Jai and other women in fish business, fisheries and aquaculture play major roles in employment generation and poverty eradication. Hence, government's investment and support to small-scale fisheries will attract foreign exchange earnings and food security for Nigeria.